Jetpack 1993 video game review. You take on the role of an adventurer armed with only a jetpack and a phase shifter which allows you to temporarily move through walls essentially. And you are out to find treasure and specifically gems. You know, gold is good, but the gems are really what, you know, you need to get all the gems before you can get through a level. As the age of this game, you should probably tell you, playing this today, you know, today it's a retro game. So, you know, if you're not into retro games, there's nothing I could possibly say here that could convince you. But if you are, this is one of the really fun ones that still today can really offer something. You know, the graphics are of course dated, but to me, gameplay is always the most important thing in a video game, and the gameplay here is just so much fun, and it's a remarkably addictive game. Basically, it's a 2D platform action-adventure game. And in addition to jumping and climbing up and down ladders, you have this jetpack which does require fuel. And it's not a given that because you have fuel, because you can fly, you'll necessarily be able to control it quite perfectly. Like in real life, you know, it the laws of physics do to an extent apply here, although you can't actually die from falling really far, regardless. Unless you land on something which will kill you. But if you are, you know, if you're moving downwards, you can, you know, let yourself fall and then use the jetpack to sort of gradually you know, prevent you from falling all the way down, but if you don't start up the jetpack soon enough, you know, it doesn't just stop you in midair exactly where you are, it gradually takes over and you're airborne, and not long after that, it's gonna lift you upwards, so you really have to control it. If you do not have any jetpack fuel, you can jump instead, and sometimes this can be really helpful. And there are levels where you just have absolutely no fuel. The game comes with a hundred levels, and they increase in difficulty, obviously, but there are actually, here and there, sudden spikes of difficulty, where it's like one or two levels in a row are just really difficult, and then you get back to much easier levels. It's a game that really requires you to plan ahead and think about what you're doing, how, how what you're doing is going to impact your surroundings. In addition to, maybe I should talk about the phase shifting, not every material can be phased through, but things like brick and there are also these boxes that don't actually reappear, those just break. But brick, there's, there's fresh brick and old brick. And with both of them, you know, they're, they're going to reappear. And the fresh brick is not going to take very long to phase, but it's also not going to take very long to reappear. And with the old brick, it's going to take a bit longer for both. When you are facing, you can only phase one thing at a time, although you can phase in all four directions, you know, up, down, left, right. Every single level, you know, basically the entire screen is comprised of, I don't know the number, but a ton of squares, perfect squares. Your character occupies one square. Any enemy that there might be occupies one square. And then there are two kinds of death traps. A hidden spear, which is this absolutely tiny little 
you know, just, I guess, spearhead is what it's supposed to be. That's, that's what the help menu says it is. To me, it just looks like a pebble. Anyway, that and these big, white, sharp things. I don't know exactly what they are. I don't remember. Those are more obvious. If you occupy the same space as one of those or one of the enemies, you're going to die. But that, that is also the only way you can die. There is no time limit. And fortunately, you can save your progress in the main mode with the 100 levels every single time you complete a level. You cannot save during the levels. Although there is also, do note, there is only one save file, so, as far as I can tell. So, you know, if several players play on the same computer, only one of them is going to be able to save. Although it does also, you know, it actually supports several players at the same time. Not quite at the same time, but sort of, you know, like games like Worms, you know, speaking of retro. Well, I guess that those still exist. Anyway, turn-based, you know, once one player is dead, basically, once one player loses one life, it moves on to the next player. And it keeps track of how far these players have gotten. You know, it's not like if one of the players completes a level, then all the players have completed. No, no. If one player completes five levels, then dies, then the next player is going to have to start from the last level, you know, they arrived at, they got to. The enemies are, you know, kind of fun designs, you know, there's this robot, really evocative of, I, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but it just, it makes me think of Terminator, you know, the Terminator franchise. It actually does kind of look like one of the, you know, those massive, well not massive compared to the others in the Terminator franchise, but in Terminator 3, 3 you know, the movie that never actually happened. Those tank tread, double Gatling gun, you know, the one cool thing about that movie. Those, it actually kind of looks like. And it will actually track you down. It's one of the enemies that genuinely looks for you. And it can climb, it can climb the ladders, just like you. And you're actually going to find that they can really mess up your day. They... You know, they're pretty relentless. Maybe that's what makes me think of Terminator. That and the, the red eye and the metal form and everything. It is seriously a robot with tank treads. How awesome is that? And no, I don't know who programmed these things to guard treasure. You have these missiles that kind of just... I guess bounce is essentially the word. They will travel in a pattern if they when they get to a wall they're going to turn if they're traveling right they're going to turn downwards and you know left upwards so on and so forth so if there is a perfect square for them to travel in they're going to travel in that perfect square but they can also you know they, they'll make corners and such they're not really looking for you they're just they might hit you, you know, stay out of its path. And by the way, any time you die, I don't know who came up with this idea. The, this game did not need to be violent at all, you know. It, it really didn't. Because when you die, it's the exact same thing no matter how you die. So they could have made this non-violent, but they didn't go that route. No, you explode in gore, you know, think like StarCraft, you know, just blood. And they play, the, there's, there's a selection of sounds that, you know, they'll play one when you die, and it'll be like this blood-curdling scream, or like a blade cutting, I don't know, makes me think of someone's throat being cut or something, or, you know, or a gunshot, you know, all these kinds of things. And just left is this, you know, maybe, 
I don't know, I guess that the hair and the jetpack, something like that, is just what is left, you know. Yeah, don't know why, but okay. And this can also really make it, you know, terrifying when you die, you know, other than it being frustrating. Yeah. Other enemies, there is this... It looks like one of those animated seagulls, you know, when someone draws seagulls seen from very far away, they're basically like this little M. It's basically that, only it has a, I guess, pink center. And it has a radar. That's, at least that's what the help screen defines it as. And that's how it finds you. It literally tries to home in on you. However, it's not terribly smart. You know, it's like with the robots, actually. You can kind of trick them. You can trick them into going somewhere and sort of staying there. The robot might not necessarily do this. It's sometimes easier to do with, I, I think it's called the bat bot. You know, the this this little M, this flying M, this, this bat. You can trick it into a corner and it's gonna, you know, because if you're over here, and it's over here, it's going to keep flying this way, even if there's a wall here, and it could just fly under there. But yeah. The, the level designs are quite nice, and there are some cute little references, and you know, and they don't make it like, they're really clear about it too. There's, there's a level actually called I don't know, I don't remember what it's called, but it's quite clearly a Pac-Man reference, you know, and they, they make it really obvious. It actually it might be called a jetpack only without the K, you know, so Pac, like in Pac-Man. And, you know, just various, there's one that's like a checkers, checkers board, and it is called checkers. And the fun part about it is you're phasing through these, you know, these various walls that make up part of the game board and, you know, trying to avoid enemies and such. And you, again, you really have to be smart about it, you know, it's, it requires a lot of coordination, you know, any game requires coordination and reflexes, but this one, you really, you know, you might, your gut instinct might be saying some, but might be telling you to do something, but if you actually stop and think, you're going to realize, no, that's not what I should do, because that might get me killed, whereas this other thing might, you know, and again, you really have to think about things. There are these barriers that can be opened either by you, by switch, and there are three colors of barriers, and there will always be a corresponding, well, whenever there is a switch, it needs to have that corresponding color. And if it does, it will open or, you know, it will put back or remove any, you know, and it's, it is literally a switch on off, you know, other than you being able to flick these switches, there are, you know, the enemies can't really flick those same switches, but there are also ground switches and any enemy that passes through a square that has a ground switch and you as well will activate that switch. So, you know, remove a barrier or put a barrier back. And these barriers aren't necessarily blocking your path. Maybe you have to walk across a barrier. Maybe you don't have any jet fuel and there's a pit of death under you and you need for an enemy to pass over a floor switch then run across that before it passes back across that switch and lets you fall. You know, there are teleporters, and the excellent thing about these teleporters, and sometimes frustrating thing about these teleporters, is that as long as they're, you know, if you have at least two, you can teleport from one to the other. If you have 20, you can teleport between them, but it's completely random. It is completely unpredictable, and you can teleport, and the enemies teleport, you know, and the enemies teleport regardless of anything else. If an enemy touches a teleporter, it will teleport. And that's also a way that you can sometimes trick. You can trick the tracking enemies into teleporters and thus get them really far away from you sometimes. You know. 
and the teleporters also have, I believe it's again a three or four different colors. And again, color correspondence, you know, they're not going to, you're not going to be able to teleport from one color to another color, color to color. The, I suppose I should talk some about the few negatives to this game. It can be really frustrating. I am currently stuck on level 95, and the reason I am is because of a lot of teleporters, mostly occupied by enemies. So I need to use these teleporters to get through the level, pretty much, or I need to avoid the enemies teleporting through them and get through the level elsewhere. I can't get through the level completely without using teleporters, by the way. One nice thing is, when you teleport, you are immune, you know, your entire body will take on the color of the teleportation very briefly, and while that is going on, you are literally invulnerable. It will only last for, I don't know, two seconds maybe, but you will be invulnerable for that time. So you can be teleporting a lot, and there might be enemies basically on you, but you might still live. Now, the, the level, you know, there are a ton of enemies and a ton of teleporters, so it's completely unpredictable for me to, you know, I might at some point get through the level, but it would partially require what is commonly referred to as sheer luck. And that is kind of annoying. You know, that the game actually has levels, actually has segments where you just have to be really lucky, you know. It does also require skill. I guess you could be just lucky enough to get through it completely without skill that level. Don't think you could get through the entire game. I wouldn't recommend it, you know. If you're trying to get through the game, actually apply yourself. But, you know, yeah, sometimes it has stuff like that. And there are, there's one particular enemy which if they had to put it in there, I think they should have made some tweaks to it. I think it's called the Flitzer. It moves completely randomly in just any... Apologies. Any direction. And, you know, it, it flies. This in itself just makes, you know, for a cool enough, random, unpredictable enemy, but sometimes it will occupy a square which you need to get to, you know. Didn't really completely cover this before, excuse me, but basically, to get through a level, get all the gems, sometimes there aren't actually any, sometimes you just... Anyway, get all the gems, then get to the exit in one piece. That is it. That is the only requirement. And sometimes there actually won't be any gems to collect, and you just have to get to, you know, the end of the level. Sometimes you start at the end of the level, and you have to work your way through the entire level, collecting gems, and then all the way back. That's fun. But, yeah, the... The Flitzer can sometimes just spend forever at in, in the same square as a gem. And you can't get to it unless you're, you know, you get invulnerability. There are a couple of power-ups. In fact, maybe I should cover the power-ups. The power-ups themselves are not bad. Just briefly, the power-ups are more fuel. There are two types of tanks. A, a single tank and a double tank. And if you get a double tank or two, uh, one single tanks, you will get you know full fuel. There is this thing that stuns the enemies for some seconds. There, uh, I don't know if you could call this a power up, but there are extra lives. Of course, it's basically a figure of yourself made of gold, and usually the gold will just grant you points. And if you earn enough points, you will get an extra life also even if you don't collect golden statues of yourself. You know, talk about vanity. The... And finally, there is the invulnerability, which will also not last for, you know, 
very many seconds. In and of themselves, these power-ups are not bad. However, they can sometimes spawn randomly in levels, and they can take all the fun out of levels. I guess if you just really... If you have a lot of self-discipline, you can just tell yourself, I'm not going to pick that up because it'll take all the fun out of the level. But, you know, if you actually do, and it just, I don't know, again, I think that they should have made this something that would go on and off. You know, that if, I don't know, maybe there's only one difficulty to the game, and that's fine. But maybe they could have, you know... A difficulty that says no power-ups will randomly appear and one that says random you know power-ups will randomly appear anyway the the jumping I well briefly the power the the jetpack can be somewhat difficult to control but I don't think this is a genuine negative. I think this is just something where you really, you know, it takes practice. It does, but it's so much fun once you're there. You know, it's much more fun than if you were to just, you know, have perfect control over, you know, this jetpack that you could just fly one space up when you wanted it to and, you know, things like that. But the jumping. Sometimes, when you're standing, if you're standing still and you jump, you will jump just straight up. This generally isn't, generally isn't terribly useful. Although it can be used to dodge enemies, you know, if there's an enemy heading towards you and you jump, and the enemy moves back away from you. But other than that, usually you'll want to be moving while jumping so that you can actually get him to jump, you know, for example, you can jump one square up or one square, you know, off to the side. So if, uh, if there is like a set of stairs essentially built from the, the bricks or whatever, you can jump up these stairs, but only if there's only one gap between. Sometimes, for some reason, I guess just programming capability, whatever, you will perform a straight upward jump even though you sh your character should have performed a sideways jump. And, you know, this can obviously cost you your life sometimes, and that's really frustrating. I think that just about covers the negative, and before I close this off, I just gotta point out you know, also, for anyone who's, you know, interested in this, it is free by now. It's freeware, you know, I guess because it's so old, you know, some games are freeware or abandonware by now from the 90s and such. I'm putting a download link in the underbar as well as a link to DOSBox, a program that you will probably need if you're going to play this on any kind of new computer. I play it on my relatively new computer, only a few years old, using DOSBox, and it runs just beautifully, smoothly. I, I couldn't believe it. I, you know... This game comes with a level editor, and you can actually... And I believe it's quite easy to trade levels as well, and there are level packs, you know, you can download other people's levels, you know, now with the internet. It didn't used to be quite like that, but I guess in the old days, you know, the good old days, people would just transfer just using, you know, floppy disks or something, I guess. And it still, it, it works just like that. You know, you save a file, give it a file name, and that's it. And you can, you know, move, you know, from computer to computer. And the level editor is extremely easy to get into, you know, and there's even a help section, even if you, if, if you have some kind of trouble. You just gotta learn what key does what, and you can actually build the levels 
just like in you have the exact same amount of freedom that they did when building the levels you know they uh, I defy anyone to find one of the hundred levels that you cannot recreate I I do not believe that that is possible you know you you place the enemies you choose the starting point you place the power-ups all but invulnerability you place you know gold you place the the exit you place the gems you can only place a maximum of 20 enemies but you can you know that's the same as in the regular game and I'm not entirely sure why anyone would quite want more than 20 and I guess again programming capability you know they only have you know every single one of those you know do have some kind of thing to them another enemy that really deserves mentioning it's a spring it, it literally is just a spring it goes up goes down that's it it if you phase a wall you can make it go up through that wall and then you might be lucky that it gets stuck in the wall. That can happen to any enemy, by the way. Or maybe just get stuck in, you know, let's say there are t t two levels. And you face through the wall and get it up to the second level and you can pass safely under there. You know, and these springs, sometimes they increase in speed or get kind of out of the, you know, they're, they're not entirely even in the springing action. So some levels, you do sort of have a time limit from that, in that that spring, you know, you can have several springs in essentially the same place. So you have to pass under two springs, and one starts here and one starts here. So, you know, they're not going to be in the exact same place. So there's really only a fraction of a second for you to pass through this square. And they move fast, you know. And also, it literally will spring from the very bottom of the level to the very top of the level if there's nothing preventing it. It's brilliant. You know, you can have it jump up and down between two, you know, squares in really close proximity, or you can have it go all the way up and all the way down. You know, you can have it triggering barriers. You can have it going through teleporters. There really is very little end to the possibilities with the level editor. And this immense freedom is just, you know, it really appeals to your creativity. I suppose I will... Two last things, yes. There are these sections that... There, there are two kinds of these sections. One drains your jetpack fuel and the other it replenishes your jetpack fuel and this again gives some great it's not going to kill you it is never going to kill you you cannot die by having too little jet fuel but you might need the jet fuel so you have to try to avoid these sections and get through them as fast as you can you know the game technically doesn't have time limits but it might encourage you to hurry you know the and then there are the um, in addition to material, I suppose that you simply cannot phase through. There are also you know the brick walls you can phase through, but there might be metal plates covering parts of them or all of them sometimes. So you know, let's say there's a there's a brick here. My finger is a brick. You might not be able to get through here, but maybe here and or here. So if you are here and you have to get here, you'll have to go around somehow. But you might be able to get right back afterwards or something. You know, again, ton of possibilities. Okay, very final thing. Anything you walk on is, you know, sometimes it's not going to have any kind of effect. But if there's ice on it, you're going to slip. You're going to just glide right through. It makes, the help section puts it really succinctly, it makes walking difficult, you know. It, you're moving very fast, and you might move straight into an enemy, or, yeah. Then there is ones with these, this kind of, I think it's called sludge in the game. It looks like moss or something. That makes you walk really slowly. 
I've been going on about this game for way too long, and I admire your patience if you're still watching. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.